Okay, back from the screencasts. Um, what is next on our list? I'm going to show you. I started writing down all the information that we have so far. You're going to have to forgive my handwriting. It is really bad. Uh, product of the keyboard, I guess, is what, what happened there. So, next thing on our list is security key. What is the security key? The security key is the password that you have to enter to join your Wi-Fi network. So, as an example, I'm on my phone now. I'm going to forget the network that I'm on right now. So if you have a buddy that comes over to your house and says, hey, I want to use my iPhone on your Wi-Fi network, and you're like, oh, sure, my network is GDNet, and he finds it on his phone, he goes to connect to it and asks for a password. That's what that is. So whatever that password is, is your security key. So I'm going to put mine in right now. If I can remember it. Join. It says joining, and check mark. I'm on. Cool. So write that down. Okay, what's next? AES key. Okay, AES key. AES is an encryption uh, standard, and uh, the mobile GDO uses AES 128 bit encryption uh, to hide the commands that you send over the network, over the internet, to tell your garage door to open or close or to get the status of it. So it's really important to have this set up um, because you don't want to have your information out on the network you know, for prying eyes to see. So that's why I encrypt it. And we do a bunch of other security stuff which we may talk about in another video. But uh, security is a, was a big concern for us when we developed this product. So we spent a lot of time and energy thinking about the best way to implement it and uh, we went with standards and a little bit of proprietary stuff just to keep the security as, as high as we possibly could. So all the AES key is, it's a key that gets stored on the mobile GDO and it gets stored on your phone. You just have to make sure you come up with a security key that's just really random. Um, it is, here's some examples, let's see I'll zoom on that, on the AES keys. Here's the explanation in here. Again, this document is on techdevices.com, T-E-K devices.com. And you can see some examples of 1234, 1234, 1234, 1221, DD, blah, 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 blah. Those are just some random numbers. It has to be that specific length, that certain number of characters. It has to be number or letter, not symbols. And um, yeah, so you just basically choose that, whatever you want it to be. And make it unique and special and don't tell anyone about it. Okay, last two items are the router WAN IP. That is, let's go back to this handy dandy diagram at the back. Your router, this is an entry point for communications from the outside from your phone, goes through the internet, and it hits your router. This has its own IP address, and it's exposed to the whole entire internet. So how do you get that? Well, there's a couple ways that you can get that. Go what? to Safari on your iPhone, open up your browser, and type in what's my IP, and hit search. I'm not going to do it because it'll show off my external IP address, and there's just no need to have it all out there because someone's going to watch this video and start hammering me with information. Um, as soon as you hit search, it's going to return your WAN IP address. That's the IP address that you need to know to put in here. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are asking right now, or maybe you do or do not know, that that IP address will change. Your internet provider will randomly change that on you. Now you need to know what that address is so that you can communicate with your router to say that I want to talk to the mobile GDO. So how do we handle that? Well, there's a few ways. Um, one, we offer software on our website for free that you download onto a computer that sits on your network. Just if you have some home desktop computer that just sits around, you can install the software on there, put in some email information, and what it'll do is it'll monitor your IP address, and when it changes, it'll send you an email saying, hey, my IP address has changed. And then you can just copy it over and paste it into the mobile GDO settings, and you'll be back in communication. The other way that you can handle it is, well, some people, it's just not an issue. They don't want to communicate with their mobile GDO in the outside world. Um, there's a handy little home button in the mobile GDO 
I'll bring it up here and show you. And you want you launch it. This one, this is a demo version, but you see this little home button. You can hit that home button. What that means is when this home is highlighted, when you go get door status or you try and open and close it, it's going to communicate as if it's on your local network. So it'll only work if you're on your local network. So only use that and then it'll communicate with the static IP that you gave your mobile GDO um, when you set it up. It'll communicate via the mobile GDO static IP address that you set up right there. Um, another way that we can handle that is you can go through what's called a dynamic DNS service. Now not to get too crazy with it, all that does is it sits on your router or again a separate uh, program on a computer and it communicates with this service and when your IP address changes it links it to a common name like you know my garage door dot something dot com and then you, all you need to know is remember that address and then the IP address gets masked um, we're gonna go through that in greater detail in other videos right now though if you just wanna do some testing and make sure it's working properly uh, go to the search type in what's my IP address on your iPhone uh, while it's on your local network the same network that the mobile GDO will be on and you'll get the IP address you can put it in there and then last but not least is the router incoming port this can be virtually any number between like 0 and 65,000 there's some numbers that are reserved for web services like 80, 80, 80, 88, 88. You don't have, don't use those numbers. A good number to use is just 2000. Um, but it could be any other number. If you want to have, make yours more unique, you could use 5000, 5001. Um, that's just a port in your firewall so that when the information comes in, go back to our handy dandy little There you go. So when the information flows from your iPhone through the internet to here, there has to be a little open, they call it a port. And that's where the data flows through. And again, we're going to set up this for external access. It'll make a little bit more sense. But basically, you're going to send a request saying, what's the status of my door? It's going to take all that information, send it through the internet, and it's going to hit the IP address that you put in, the router, router WAN IP that you put in right here. And it's going to say, and port 5000. And then you're going to do what's called port forwarding. And you're going to send that information to your to the local IP address and port of your mobile GDO. Again, we'll go through that more in the future. Key right now is that you just get the information down. Um, so you write all this stuff down. We've got it. NetMask, LAN Gateway, um, AES key. I haven't wrote it down, but I showed you an example. Uh, router WAN IP, I just told you about that. And the port number. So, yeah. I think that basically covers that off. So you have all that information. That is the end of step one. Step one's a doozy. This is going to be a long video. But uh, once you get that all in, you're, you're well on your way to getting this thing set up. So let's go to step two in the next video. Install the mobile GDO app on your iPhone.